Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control. We are in our fourth trip to the uh, Ocean View Motel and Casino. I believe it's our fourth. And we have yet to step into this place and not see something new. Like this funky little room. Were you paying attention to the painting? I was. It's fine. Admittedly, this is not a terribly complicated puzzle. Nothing in the first two rooms. And in the third, we can actually manipulate that painting. Which you just have to turn the once, and you're good. You go back to the desk, ring the bell, opens the first door back up, the one directly across from 223, where the blood is leaking out from underneath the crack in the door. We are electing to ignore that because we have simply no way into the room. And we have other things to do anyway, anyway like finding Dylan. It's been a long time since Dylan and I knew each other. I've wondered about him, what kind of man he'd grow up to be things as hard for him as they were for me. Maybe in here, they were even harder. It would be quite a twist if Dylan was just happy and fulfilled and well-adjusted. Oh, hello. Is there something I can help you with? I'm Jesse, the new director. I need to get inside. New director? Right. Uh, well, okay. Hello, I'm Frederick Langston, the Panopticon supervisor. It's not the best time for a tour. We have hiss everywhere, numerous cell breaches, and system failures across the board, but you're the director, so here we go. Founded by Zachariah Trench, the Panopticon is our state-of-the-art repository for all altered I items. I don't have time for this. Power and I was told Dylan Faden was kept here. Can you help me find him? Faden? Uh, sure. Darling wanted him somewhere secure and isolated away from people. He's in the maximum security cells, upper level. But there's currently a, uh, a pressing matter, ma'am. We've got an object of power loose in there, and it's wrecking the place. The Benikoff TV? It's a, it's a real doozy. Salvador took a team in to handle it, but no one's heard from them for hours. This is a Category 5 OOP we're talking about, and if we don't contain it soon, it will tear the Panopticon apart. And we don't want all those altered items getting loose, ma'am. No, trust me. Dylan's in there. Open the door, Langston. I'll handle it. If you say so. Uh, I usually tell first-timers not to touch anything, so... Uh, just do that. Here, I'll get the door for you. And please, ma'am, call me Fred. Thanks, Langston. <laughs> oh, we're not done talking at Langston. No rush or anything. It's just, you know. Do you like working at the FPC? Sure. I mean, yeah, the drama's a bit much, but I get better benefits here than I would over at the Postal Service. I checked better health care. That's not to say I don't like my job, ma'am. Been here over 15 years. No one knows the Panopticon collection better than me. I'm, uh, close to them, in a way. I can't tell if that's creepy or normal here. How do you keep the altered items under control? It depends on the item. Each one has different needs. Ritualistic touches go a long way. Singing to them. Did he say singing? Flipping the lights three times, that sort of thing. It's not superstition if it works. What's the difference between objects of power and altered items? Think of them like storms. Objects of power are like tropical cyclones or hurricanes for the uneducated. They're big, rare, and scary. Of course, directors can just bind the OOP and become the eye of the storm. Altered items are more like weird thunderstorms. Some may rain frogs, some may rain corn, but they all rain something. And how does the hiss factor into all that? It's changing them, making them aggressive. Now they're all raining, I don't know, knives. 
Knife rain. Nice metaphor. Knife rain! Did you work closely with Trench? Oh, he spent most of his time with Darling and all them. The inner circle. Not that I care. Trench certainly had his favorites. He did stop in occasionally to scowl and smoke. Did you know the Bureau has a no smoking policy? It does. Just not for Trench. Still, he is the one who put aside funding for the Panopticon. The man did have vision. How did you get this job? Started as a junior agent because my uncle knew a guy. From there I got put on a desk until an accident left the containment sector severely understaffed. At which point I got bumped up to management. Put in a steady eight hours a day for another ten years and voila, supervisor. I just picked up a gun. Or a gun picked me. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here, like always. Talking to Langston is the best. I love Langston. He's such an oddball, but they all are. That's the best part. The thermos is this? Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the thermoses that were collectibles in Alan Wake. And Bright Falls and Cauldron Lake and direct references to Alan Wake himself. So many cell breaches. This a breach. Oh, he's so much dialogue too. Close. But that object of power might wreck this place before I find it. Okay, so we have to deal with the Benikoff TV way up there before we get a chance to actually check in on Dylan. But I still want to talk about Langston, because uh, especially his introductory scene serves as a really, really good illustration of what makes this game so wonderful, or one of the many things, um, and what it really digs into. And it's the... Uh, the, the methodical normalization of things that are thoroughly wrong. The behavior and the whole structure of the Bureau just hits you as uncanny, or at least it's supposed to. I think it hits that mark really often. But also, that's because things are odd around here. They are uncanny. They are, but they aren't. Because plenty of bizarre, terrible things become normalized within cultures and subcultures until it's just background noise, until it's something you're used to. And then it stops seeming quite so weird. It's just part of your, your everyday. But this strikes a chord because of how numb everyone seems to things that in a vacuum would be cause for everybody to panic over. But again, that's just every day. That's what their routine is. There's an EGM article that I think I've alluded to before. I'll link it this time uh, that gets to this in a really interesting way by talking about uh, this whole story from the perspective of someone who, uh, who grew up in New Mexico, not very far from uh, the very first atomic bomb testing site. It also goes into some of the uh, cool Cold War aesthetics of this game and some of the some of the ways that uh, Cold War thrillers influenced Remedy. Uh, now, I don't think I want to bother with the personal mods, but upgrading the base damage of Pierce and just having the extra weapon slot not going to be half bad, especially if we can just get some more kick in this thing. We will one-shot everything. <laughs> uh, but especially we have some of those... Some new variants of the floating hiss. And I really like Pierce against them. I want to be able to take them out in between one and two shots. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ooh, and we can catch a glimpse at some of the altered items and the objects of power they have located around here. Looks like a little Easter basket, which is nice and festive. That's a bit spectral. But there's one. Hmm, just an unassuming hammer. There is one that I am on the lookout for. Uh, but I think it's on the, the fourth floor th uh, that Something we're heading up to. With the Bureau's plan to make Dylan the next director. Marshall made it sound like it was all Dylan's fault, but how much of it was what the Bureau did to him? I don't think she's telling me. Oh, hey there, friend. You coming up with me? Yeah, you are. We got a new pet. We will name him Dylan, too. Just in case things don't work out. I'll come back, I promise. Okay, okay, just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer. So I think, even though she says we're in the middle of an emergency and everything's going on with the Benikoff TV, I think we might still be able to do fridge duty now. And then come back to the main quest. Either that or I'm going to have to finish Fridge Duty. Um, um, what is the main quest called? My Brother's Keeper. Or at least deal with the Benikoff TV first. But if we don't have to wait, I don't want to. Because Fridge Duty is going to open up some vistas to us. The next performance review. I have a cat to feed. <laughs> Let me know when the hiss are gone. No. my desk. Ah, uh, no. We're not going to be able to relieve Philip of this? fridge duty that for was, now. Uh, I mean, uh, so let's work our way back. The loading time, fast traveling within the Panopticon, was pretty much instant, so didn't even waste that much time checking. But there's no way I'm putting off this mission any longer than I actually have to. Oh shit, well, we're still gonna see some shit this episode. Uh, even if we don't get back to the fridge until next time. Oh, but I'm really excited about the fridge. Here we go. There are some of the rangers gonna shoot out with a hiss as we speak. This is gonna hold them still for us, too. I'm surprised that one didn't dodge the telekinesis pro uh, projectile. They usually do. I am going to go ahead and say that that's... Oh, shit. Ah, uh, that's because of my ranger friend distracting them that I was able to hit that. Ah, come on. Someone threw a grenade from behind us. So where is this last one? I guess it doesn't exist. May have been the ranger throwing it, I guess. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. Power. I need to cleanse it.
So the Benikoff TV is pretty cool. Let's just get a look at what it's done to the environment behind us before we move forward into this vortex of concrete. Holy shit. This is so cool every time. Oh, it's rude that we can't start this fight off just sniping a few of them. Oh wait, that's uh, mm, hold on. There we go. So now we know what happened to Salvador, who went in hours ago, uh, and really just did not get a whole lot accomplished, huh? We are chunking him down, though. We can actually use a few of those ads right about now. There we go. Because we shot a bunch of health out of Salvador. But he's still kind of right in the way. So gotta create an opening. God, this is a cool arena, too. Enemies do blend in a little bit, especially since it's red on red. We can definitely take advantage of this dude. God, I love how much that goes through the shield, too. It's just direct health damage. Barely have to worry about his armor. Oh, that... I don't know what I grabbed, but it's not what I wanted to. And as long as we can just keep taking really big shots at him, we'll have plenty of health. This is an awkward spot, but not too bad. Because it lets us loop around to do this. Ooh, I actually missed that. That's a bad one to be missing. That thing was Salvador, the head of security. His team didn't stand a chance against the Hiss. No one here does. Okay, the TV. Another object of power gone nuts. A little follow up on the anchor. even become routine to her. She was always pretty down for whatever happened, but especially now she's just used to it. How quickly she became acclimated to it. Use the TV slash babysitter levitate slash superhero over the obstacles. <laughs> That's some of my favorite board dialogue, and we have not gotten that much board dialogue uh, lately. Could be checking the uh, the hotline more, I guess. But still, superhero over the obstacles, so good. Because it makes it hard to tell how much of that of the way they construct their sentences is this being um, just a foreign way for them to communicate and using all of these distinctly human things as their, their frames of reference or if they just have a sense of humor. <laughs> like It's hard to tell if that's a joke or if that's them just not really getting human communication or human concepts. And then that gets really ominous. Okay, dealt with the TV. Now I can find Dylan. So, did you think that we were going to get a levitation power? 
a levitation that costs no energy. And we can still air dash while we are levitating. So in a way, it feels like a double jump the way it's activated. And the fact that you get that height boost, it may as well be a double jump with a really long hang time. Okay, good. Not gonna get that, though. Who just spawned in my- oh, shit. <laughs> Now we get to get, have cool Neo battles. <laughs> we could have Matrix fights like it's fucking Indigo Prophecy. Except with fewer quick time events. Uh, and this puts us back out on the bridge and since we can just levitate now, Hello, friend. He was out all on his own. Uh, we can just jump down this. We could do that before, but now it's really easy to do this. Just catch yourself a little bit. Float gracefully down like a feather. Cool. And are we on the right side of the bridge? We are not. So with the Benikoff TV out of the way, the main thing I want to check in on is to see whether or not we can start fridge duty right away. He's got a real chip on his shoulder. Good time to talk about hazard pay. What? Oh, there's so much he can say. Like always. Oh man. Okay, I think we're gonna have to get uh, to the next main quest off of my brother's keeper. So for now, thank you all for watching. We will definitely get to fridge duty next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.